And not uncommon comment about international trade is that some of the country, some country, we lose on international trade. And we uh, economists, we normally say that that is not true. And this is a quite simple example to try to explain that actually both countries will have a net gain on the international trade if we have differences in the starting point. So we start by uh, looking at um, two countries and one single good. So we have the quantity of the good and the horizontal axis. That's Q here. And we have prices on, on the vertical axis. We will have two countries. We will have red country on the left hand side. And we see that the inverted demand function is price equal to H minus Q. And the inverted supply function is price equal to quantity. So if we draw these two lines and we make the assumption that we have perfect competition, we will have an equilibrium in Autoki that is giving us a price of 40 and a quantity of 40. And when we look at blue country, we have the same uh, demand. Uh, we have the demand function and the supply function in blue country given by those functions. So if we draw them, we we'll look like this. And also in blue country, we will have a an equilibrium in Autoki that in this case will give us a price of 20 and a quantity of 40. So if we open up these two countries for international trade, we let them start trade with each other and with this good, then, then we can start this third graph that we have in the middle, which will become the, the common market for these two. So we, we, so to speak, make this to be one market out of this uh, one country, one market, out of these two different pot markets, so to speak. So we will have a price and a quantity there, of course. But as you see, we will have a different scale on the quantity axis. Due to the case that we are now summed, will sum up two different countries. So what we do here is that we make the assumption that the common market will not be valid for prices above 40, because that's the highest price that that red country is willing to, to accept. And we will have a lowest price of 20 because that's the lowest price that blue country will are willing to act on this uh, international market for. Due to the case that that gives us the equilibrium in both countries, 20 and 40. So we sum them and then we will have uh, horizontally. So we will have the common market demand function that is price equal to 70 minus 1 half Q. And we will have a common market supply function that is price equal to Q divided by 3. So we draw them. And we'll have these two lines like that, black here. And we then see that the equilibrium in, in the common market will give us a quantity of 84. So we start by having equilibrium in, um, in red country with 40 and a blue country with 40. So when we add them up, we're actually going to have an a international trade that gives us a higher quantity, 84 instead of 40. We will have a price that is given by this international market, so we'll have a price that is equal to 28. So if we look at in, in um, red country, we see that when we go from auto key to international trade, we will have a reduction of the price, the price will go down. So therefore, the producers are not willing to produce as much anymore. But the consumers are willing to buy more. So we see here that the producers are now willing just to produce 28 units, but the consumers are willing to buy 52. So we have made an uh, excess demand here from 28 up to 52 units in red country. And when we look, uh, so th th that has to be fulfilled by import of 24 units. And then we look at the blue country, we see that when the price goes up from 20 to 28, demand will go down in that country. So we're going to reduce it from 40 down to 32. But since we are getting higher costs, uh, much more paid for, for the units that we are producing, the producers in, in blue country are willing to produce more. So they will uh, increase the production to 56. So we see that we will have an excess, excess supply. And also this one will become equal to 24 units. 
And that is based on, we must have an import in, in one country that is equally large as the export in the other one. Because we're, what we're doing here is that we have looked at the common market, and we know that the common market is, has an equilibrium, where all the quantities that are produced are equally large, uh, same quantity as we demand. So, start analyzing this. We see in the red country, since the consumers now pay a lower price, the consumer surplus will increase by this red area there. So, they, they're going to reduce the price from 40 to 28, which will give them a, a gain on that area due, uh, based on the quantity that they consumed uh, from the beginning. And then they also increase the consumption by this uh, valued by this area. So this red area here is the uh, gain in consumer surplus. But we will also have a loss in red country. The loss is the producer surplus due to the case that the sub suppliers, the producers now, produce a smaller quantity and to a lower price. So this red squared area here, that is the loss in producer surplus in red country. We make the same analysis in blue country, and in this case, we see that the blue dot, uh, sorry, the blue squared area here, that's the gain in producer surplus. We see here that they now sell to a higher price, and which is positive, and a larger quantity, which also positive. So this blue squared area is the gain in producer surplus in blue country, but. We also have losers in blue country, and the losers in blue country are the consumers because they are now uh, forced to pay a higher price. Their price will increase from 20 to 28, which therefore will decrease the consumer surplus by this blue area there. So when we look at it, we see uh, that in red country we have a net gain of this triangle here, and in blue country we we'll also have a net gain in this blue area there, this triangle there. So what we see is quite obvious that we have uh, a total net gain in both countries.